warning. This is a commissar pro impressions review video. It's full of WMDs, a cult of personality, and empty threats. Pure discretion is advised. Hello comrades, Commissar Bro here today with Little Red Dog Games' Rogue State. That's right, this is kind of a mixture of Democracy 3, Sim Junta, and other, like maybe Masters of the World, Ruler of Nations, one of those one of those games. Similar to those, similar to that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, this game is a blast. Like, I know normally I do the whole impressions thing before I give my actual review of it. But this game is really fucking cool. Like, as someone who really enjoys playing politically uh, inclined games, this one hits hits a lot of stuff really on the head. I feel like it's a little anti-American, but at the same time, it's very, very well done. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, this I, I honestly I can't help but uh, talk really, really good about it. It's really hard too. So that's that's something is not, something else. It's really hard to keep the approval of your people, of your military, of your ministers, of your parliament. I mean, it's it, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty decent challenge, but if you can do it, which I'm actually doing a pretty good job right now. If you can do it, then you're going to have a blast with this game. So, let's really talk about like the things that you can do in this game. And I'll just kind of go down the list uh, <coughs> to do it simply. So, first off, with policies, Policies, uh, as you as you know, things like uh, free trade zone, uh, whether your country is an alcoholic country or not, you know, stuff like that. And you know, that's kind of how you how you focus on on this this various things here. You basically have little sliders that you go left and right with, and it affects the approval rating of your various people. Yet, it also affects your support, your GDP, your jobs, your crime, your labor rights, corruption, so on. Changes aren't immediate. So, like, if you change one of these policies right now, it might be fine right now. But within three turns, you know, the situation could have gotten very dire. People, like, liberals will be like, oh, we don't like the CCTV cameras. Rah, 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 rah. But then the patriots... Over here, we'll be like, oh, but we like the CCTV channel. So, rabble, rabble, rabble. That's right. So, it's kind of trying to find a balance uh, over time that everyone can kind of agree with. And keep in mind, not everyone is going to agree uh, with it. So, yeah. And sometimes you kind of just got to make decisions uh, based on what you think would be best. And it, it tends to work out pretty well for you, if you ask me. But in, and sometimes you're going to have unhappy people, as you can see here, the fundamentalists. And sometimes you're going to have really happy people, like the capitalists here. So what I'm going to focus on is trying to get fundamentalists a little bit higher. Maybe not so much anybody else, but you know, we're going to try to get the fundamentalists uh, and, and try to work on fixing some of these issues we have here, like labor rights. And we're going to give a little bit a low minimum wage to give off a little bit more money. Keep in mind also, uh, changing these policies will also affect how much money you're making every turn. And they can also affect your military approval uh, from what I've seen. So we can get rid of the death penalty. The Patriots won't like that, but the Liberals sure will. Um, how can we make the Patriots happy? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We might have to keep the death penalty on that one. Yeah, we'll keep the death penalty. Maybe maybe better laws? We'll do capable prosecution. We could get rid of the free trade zone. And we can get rid of that. Oh, that's just, just such a big dip, though. I don't know if I can take that. We, we have a serious problem with jobs right now. So... I don't know. That'll be good. We'll kind of experiment with it. We'll see how it goes after a turn. And we'll look at some other stuff as well. So you've also got treasury and commodity data, which shows you how much money you're making. And also what your tax rate is. As you can see, my tax rate's only 15%. It seems to make me a pretty decent amount of money, so I'm not really, I'm not too big on it. You've also got a couple of graphs here that show you trade agreements. Of course, I don't have any trade agreements. 
and it also gives you details on the various commodities in the game as you can see the ones we're pretty much we have right now is water and um, culture that's right so those are the two there now you've also got the parliament and cabinet screen which shows you how supportive the parliament is of you right now parliament is very supportive of me which is a great thing um, so yes we've got that going for us keep in mind you'll also pick your ministers at the beginning of the game which are these four people here Farouk is your brother and he's always negative because he's an asshole everybody else is, tends to be positive um, and you just kinda figure out like which, what's more important to you obviously I didn't pick intelligence because I don't think intelligence um, like is my necessary goal here keeping everyone happy is kind of what I'm going for so you've also got your parliamentary advisor which you click here he comes in he asks you do I still have confidence in the parliament oh yes you sure do basically and then what's our international reputation it's great of course it is because we're awesome thank you Billy you can step over there now so Billy you can stand over there and you can talk to him if you need to so another important thing is infrastructure you've got three separate tabs you've got security you've got society and you've got trade and diplomacy now what I try to do is I try to ensure that we have a very steady cash flow so uh, as you can see here I'm kinda establishing some American stuff in our little kingdom but unfortunately by doing that Eh, people, some people don't like you as much. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be careful with that. Your people, like your more traditional fundamentalists, might not like the Americans being in your country. So let's see. The people are complaining about the high salaries and generous pensions being awarded to serving ministers while the government continues to cut public benefits. They see your government's corrupt and bloated. Cat yep, of course. Let's make the people happy. The ministers won't like it, but it'll make the people happy. And that's all that matters to me. Oh yeah, look at that raise. Mm, sexy. So yes, our overall popularity is 70%. And like I said, you get bonuses for building that infrastructure. So in this case, we built the American Hotel. We get plus 10 to U.S. relations, plus 5 to capitalist approval, plus 3 to turn, turn from tourism, and also an additional plus 1 uh, by having 5-star service in our hotel. That's right. And we've almost got enough to build a global shipping giant. Mm, yes, that's right. When you're capitalist approval, you get plus 15 a turn. Plus, it increases your GDP. So, obviously, that is something we're going to go for. Now, Excellency, it is time for the people of Basinji to erect a statue depicting the great revolution and our triumph over the evil King Salmon. The Ministry of uh, Communications is deadlocked as to where it should be placed and would like your opinion. Place it in town so all people can remember the momentous occasion. Place it in front of the state center so we can remember those who fell in the revolution. Place it directly in front of the American Embassy with a reminder that Basinji will not soon forget their support of the late king. Place it next to Basinji's legislative so our ministers know their first loyalties to the cause. Place it in front of the royal palace so my role in the revolution is never forgotten. Mm, yes, that's a, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Mm, I don't know. I guess we'll do that one. Oh, well, that increased loyalty with everybody, so I'm happy with it. I am happy with it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> as long as my people are happy, I'm happy as well. All right, so policies. We're going to have to adjust a couple real quick because apparently our jobs are still really, 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 really shitty. So we are going to stop doing that. Sorry, capitalists. I know you like it, but I don't care for it. And uh, let's see, worker... Unionization is permitted, and I guess we could put free trade zone back up. I don't really know how that affects. <coughs> I wonder. I, I imagine a free trade zone will kind of hurt us economically, but you know what? I don't really give a shit. We'll make it work. We'll make it work, and we'll we'll do a little bit of extra for the homeless and for uh, disabled peoples, so we can assist that. Hopefully, people will like that. Hopefully, it'll make everyone happy. Anyway, so yes. So the other thing you've got in the game is you've got a phone. You can literally phone your neighbors or you can phone the United States of America. Now, if you play this game, I hope you don't mind a couple of jokes uh, in favor of the U.S. Because they, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not very, they're not overly nice about the U.S. in this game. Which is interesting because it looks like it's made by two Americans. But hey, what I know. 
Anyway, an all inspiring rare sea horse is covered in a reef very close to a seaport and a construction environmentalist are calling for you to put a hold on further construction in light of the discovery. Mm, yes, yeah, so all the seaports are completely designed to minimize the impact on the seahorse population. There we go, so it didn't piss anybody off. Alright, so the American ambassador's here. We're gonna meet with him. I don't know what his name is. They never really give names here. Yes, take a seat. Yes, yes. Sit down, my good man. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for seeing it me, Ambassador. My it is my pleasure. Yeah, of course it is. <clears throat> so I've already pretty much done everything I could do uh, with him. Aside from the military partnership, you can actually get additional troops from the U.S. to help you in case you have a revolt, in case you have something bad happening, so on and so forth. So I'm going to try asking him about this. Well, oh. New intelligence report on New Zealand, apparently. All right, so that's basically all we can talk to him about. Again, I kind of already talked to him, so <laughs> I pretty much did everything we could do. So, yeah. About President Aranavos is available. All right. So, yes, this is pretty much the game. The last thing I'll show you is the Situation Room, uh, which is where all your military affairs occur. Now, you've got the Procurement Officer who basically this is where you recruit new units for your uh, for your little your little people's republic of Basinji. now you've also got intelligence reports let me go here and as we have new intel on Aronavos uh, he's weak on security issues border integrity has eroded in recent years so basically he would probably be a good one to attack if you wanted to which is something I'm about to get to now if you go to strategic overview and you look down you'll see that you can actually attack your neighbors. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You can attack them or you can trade with them. Personally, I'm more of a trading type myself. I'm not really out to kill anybody. I kind of like the idea of just getting along with your neighbors and all that good stuff. Yeah, that's right. And you also got clandestine operations where at, once you get the right technology and infrastructure upgrades, you can build WMDs, you can build the space program, a hydroelectric jam, a great firewall, you can do assassination, brainwashing, time machine, all sorts of crazy little shit. And, uh, yeah. And then you can also fire nukes at people. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, this has been Commissar Bro showing off Rogue State. Again, this game is an absolute blast. It's very well done. There's so much personality here. And it's actually cool to see your avatar walking around like his his uh, presidential room and so on and so forth because too many of these games do not focus on any personality whatsoever and they just put the geopolitical uh, stuff like the actual simulator right there for you so you can just sit here with your sliders and your bars and all sorts of things and you don't really get a representation of what's going on it's generally uh, explained to you via text which is not as interesting as actually kind of sitting here and playing and actually seeing like artistic representations and stuff of the people and stuff like that so I love it this is great this is so worth the money every single dollar and I highly recommend it to anybody uh, who's interested in geopolitical games and yeah I mean that's that's it this game is fucking awesome <laughs> but anyway this has been Commissar Bro. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this has assisted you in you making your purchasing decisions. And I'll see all your beautiful people next time.